Do you want to pay less in taxes? Since I don't know anyone that would answer no to that question, today we're going to cover the top 10 ways that you can legally lower the amount you need to pay in taxes. Let's dive into it. The first way that you can legally pay less in taxes is to contribute to your retirement accounts. Retirement accounts like a 401k or a 403b allow you to reduce your taxable income because money contributed to these funds is all done pre-tax. This basically means that in any given year, you can reduce the amount of money the government requires you to pay on taxes by the amount you choose to contribute to these retirement accounts. At the time of this recording in 2022, Uncle Sam allows you to contribute $20,500 per year to your 401k, which means you can reduce your taxable income by over 20 grand simply by maxing out your 401k each year. I'll have a video linked up here where I walk you through exactly how you can optimize your 401k to work best for you. So be sure to check that out if you're interested. Additionally, if you're looking to do yourself a favor, you can also contribute up to $6,000 to a Roth IRA. And while this won't help reduce your taxable income in the years you contribute to your Roth IRA, when you're in retirement and you withdraw from that account, you won't have to pay any taxes on the gains that your money grew. So this is a great way you can help your future self pay less in taxes down the road. The second way you can legally pay less in taxes is by contributing to an HSA account. The term HSA stands for health savings account and is a special account that's offered by some employers that helps reduce your taxable income. HSAs are incredibly powerful because they're considered to be triple tax advantage. This basically means that HSAs help shield your money from taxes in three ways. The first is that your contributions are made tax-free, which means they reduce your taxable income. The second way is that any investment growth within your HSA account will actually grow tax-free. And thirdly, any qualified withdrawals from this account are tax-free. So you can see how HSAs are incredibly powerful for minimizing your tax bill. They do have some strings attached when it comes to withdrawing from them, and the withdrawals need to be spent on medical purchases, but this is a pretty broad term and can apply to things like band-aids, glasses, over-the-counter medication, and much more. So utilizing an HSA is a great way to reduce your taxes on products you'd normally be purchasing anyway. The third way you can reduce your taxes is by creating a college fund. In order to incentivize people to plan for higher education, the US government has made certain education-focused accounts like a 529 plan that's eligible for tax savings. The way these work is if you contribute after-tax money to a 429 plan, the money you have in there will grow tax-free and you won't be charged any taxes when you withdraw from the fund for educational expenses. And these plans don't just have to be for yourself. You can set up 529 plans for your friends and family if you're looking for a way to set aside money for future education in a tax-free environment. So you'll definitely want to check these out. Pairing with this educational theme, the fourth way you can reduce your taxes legally is by deducting your student loan interest. Students and parents are allowed to deduct up to $2,500 each year from their federal taxes provided they earn under the said income limit. At the time of this recording, in order to receive the full $2,500 deduction, you'll need to earn less than $70,000 a year if you file your taxes solo. If you earn over this amount, you might still be eligible for some of the tax saving benefits. It'll just be slightly reduced as your income level raises. It's important to note that the eligible loans are only for direct educational expenses like tuition, textbooks, and supplies, and cannot include things like room and board insurance and transportation. The fifth way you can reduce how much you pay in taxes legally is by claiming business deductions on your side hustle. The government is familiar with the phrase, you need to spend money to make money. And so they've set up some deductions you can claim on your business expenses that can lighten your tax bill. One of the major ones that you can write off is part of your home office expenses if you truly work from home. This can include purchases of equipment like a computer or supplies like printer ink and paper clips. These do have to be honest business expenses. That's not a write off. That's not a write off. This? Not a write-off! So keep that in mind while you're tallying up your expenses. You're also able to write off the business travel expenses you have. So if you are spending money flying for work, riding in Ubers, or staying in hotels, all of this can be written off as a business expense if it's related to your work. You're also eligible to deduct half of your business meal expenses. So if your business involves whining and dining clients or suppliers, this is certainly something you'll want to do some extra research on to ensure that your side hustle's tax situation is being optimized 
maximize correctly. The sixth way you can reduce your tax burden legally is by making charitable donations. Many people think of charitable donations as simply donating money. There's plenty more outside of cold hard cash you can donate to increase your charitable giving tax deduction. Donating food to food pantries or clothes and old items you don't use anymore to a goodwill all can count towards your charitable giving amount. When you give these non-cash donations to places like Goodwill or Salvation Army, you can ask for a receipt for your donation with the expected donation value on there. You should save these or at least take a picture of them for reference when it comes to tax time. In most cases, you're able to deduct up to 50% of your total income in charitable giving. So if you're in a position where you think you'll be donating a lot, it's definitely important to take advantage of this. The seventh way you can legally reduce how much you owe in taxes is to see if you can deduct some of your medical bills. Now, we've already covered how HSAs can lower your taxes, but there's another scenario where your medical bills might be able to reduce your tax burden. And that is whenever they are more than 7.5% of your adjusted gross income for that year. Basically, if you're burdened with heavy medical bills, anything over 7.5% of your gross annual income can be deducted from your taxes. To calculate this, let's do a quick example. Let's say you have a gross income of $45,000 and in a given year have $6,000 of medical expenses. To determine how much you would deduct, you would simply multiply $45,000 by 0 0.075, which equals $3,375, which means that anything over this amount you can deduct from your taxes. So when you subtract your total medical bills, which in this scenario is $6,000, you learn that you can deduct $2,625 from your taxes. The eighth way you can reduce your taxes is by selling underperforming stocks. Everyone aims to sell stocks for a profit, meaning that you sell the stock for a higher price than what you bought it for. When you do this, you're liable to pay a tax on the amount of money that you made from selling the stock. However, this always doesn't work out, and sometimes you end up selling the stock for lower than you paid for it. In this case, the loss that you realize from selling your stock for lower value can reduce the taxes you pay on the stocks that you did sell for a profit. In a given year, you can claim up to $3,000 in losses on your taxes, which if you're in the 24% federal tax bracket, would amount to $720 in tax savings, which is pretty good. Now, there are some rules with this. You can't sell an underperforming stock, claim a loss, and then quickly buy it back again for a similar price. The government states that in order to claim a loss on your taxes, you must not repurchase the asset again for at least 30 days. So keep this in mind when you do sell at a loss. It's also not wise to simply sell stocks in order to claim a loss on your taxes. And definitely do your research to determine if selling underperforming stocks makes sense for your overall financial strategy. The ninth way you can avoid paying unnecessary taxes is by going back to school. It's no secret that increasing your education level can oftentimes unlock greater earning potential down the road. And many educational expenses qualify for tax breaks, meaning this is a win-win scenario. The American Opportunities Tax Credit might enable you to reduce your tax burden by $2,500. Additional incentives such as the Lifetime Learning Credit can enable you to deduct another $2,000 more from your tax bill, provided you're putting that money towards furthering your education. These educational tax credits certainly make higher education substantially more affordable. So if you'd like me to cover them in more detail in a future video, let me know in the comments below. The 10th way you can reduce your tax bill is to legally file an amended return. An amended return basically allows you to update your previous tax returns to include tax breaks that you might not have realized at the time you qualified for. In fact, if it's been less than three years since filing a return, you can file an amended tax return to claim the tax break that you missed. To do this, you'll need to complete the paperwork for Form 1040X to amend the return and claim your missing refund. So if you're smacking your forehead watching this video thinking of the tax breaks you didn't take advantage over the years. You can rest easy knowing that you can use this route to recapture some of those tax savings. Now it is important to note that the IRS does scrutinize the tax return amendments very carefully, so it's important to ensure that you're truly eligible for the return, or you might be setting yourself up for some future legal headaches. Which brings us to our 11th point, which is almost more of an honorable mention than an actual point, and that is to work with the right system or expert on your taxes. If you have a relatively straightforward tax situation, you can probably get away with filing for yourself with a website like TurboTax or H&R Block. And if you're frustrated by some of the fees that these sites charge to use their service, there is a service called Free Tax USA, which allows you to file your federal taxes for free. So be sure to check them out if you're looking to save 60 or so dollars around filing time. However, if your tax situation is a little more complicated, it might be wise to hire an expert to work on your taxes for you. Chances are, if you are in this complex category, the amount of money you pay an expert might be less than the added savings they're able to identify through through tax breaks, you might miss on your own. So it's certainly worth doing the research here if you think your situation is unique. 
Do you know of any other legal strategies to lower your tax bill? If so, please let me know in the comments below. Seriously, I love hearing from you guys and it's great to see the comments down there. If you found this video useful, please do me a huge favor and like this video and subscribe to the channel. Those little gestures really do go a long way. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all are having a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.